Hello and thank you so much for joining us on the biggest, the boldest and the very best of sports show on TV. This is Spot Pizza where we give you the absolute best in the very exciting world of sport. My name is Bronson Wana, your host, and I must tell you that the program today is well loaded for your viewing pleasure. Now, on the program today, we'll be looking at um, Nigeria, um, players' activities in the transfer market, big, big signings we hear, and of course, some big more to come. And as far as the MPFL is concerned, is done and dusted. Rivers United, in a grand style, won the league. And of course, for all tennis fans, I think it smiles all the way, especially for me as Serena Williams returns for Wimbledon, where she clinched this one. Time will tell. Let's take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll serve you all the details. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, before we give you all the details, let me bring in my reliable strike partner, Ola Kule Philip, joins me at this time. Kule, good time on the program today. Yeah, thank you very much. Top of the day to you, Brownson. It's great to be here once again to talk sports and, you know, it's really getting exciting. I'm very delighted. I think I had a great weekend looking at um, what the Under-17 did, the Under-17 uh, male team did, talking about the Golden Neglect at the Wafu uh, B tournament in Cape Coast, Ghana, going all the way uh, to win the tournament and also remember the fact that they qualify uh, for the other 17 Afcon uh, tournament. I think I had a great time watching those young lads. Mm. And I can tell you the future is bright for Nigerian sports. That's what it is. The future is definitely bright for Nigerian football. Now, let's also say the future is bright for Rivers United players uh, because they would be having a, let's say, governorship handshake. After winning the Nigerian Professional Football League in a grand style. And of course, uh, for them, it, it was a great day. Rivers United, no doubt, the quality and how they've played. Don't forget that uh, before last weekend, they were about um, nine point there about clear uh, yeah. and they needed one team to sleep for them oh, to get points. that title yeah and of course that happened and now they're champions yeah even before they played their their own game uh, i think uh, they might yeah, they this their 34th game uh they there was this particular game involving aqua united and Plato United, Plato United are their arc rivals. They are the only team that were really contending with them. And they were 10 points ahead of them at that time. They needed, Plato United needed to win to sustain. What we knew was just a matter of time before Rivers United will, will win the league because they've got, they've done all the work uh, already. They just needed, you know, probably, uh, we were thinking probably by the time the match gets to March day 34, I mean 36. Uh, they will be rounding it up. Unfortunately for Rivers United and the very unfortunate one for Plato United uh, right there at the Aqua Stadium. They lost by, I think, two goals to one to Aqua United and that ended Rivers United uh, the trophy. They worked extremely hard for the trophy and mm. the, the governor of the city that told them, look, just go ahead, win the league and when you come back, I think I've got a lot of reward for you. I think the guys have done well and Bronson, one other person that won't really, really need to pay attention to and Shower high level of encomiums to is the coach for Tayo Shaw. Uh, the coach uh, I knew started from Remo Stars, from Remo Stars, you know, moved to uh, I think uh, some other clubs. Ayimba was also the coach of Ayimba uh, before becoming the coach of Rivers United. I think so far it has been absolutely amazing uh, for the coach. I think uh, if you're looking at, at one of the best coaches we have presently in the Nigerian uh, Professional Football League, Domestic League, mm -hmm. I really want to talk about Fatah Asha. Congratulations to Rivers United. Congratulations to Fatah Asha. And of course, congratulations to the people of Rivers State. A very big congratulations to Rivers United indeed. Now let's see how well they can give a very good representation of our league on the continent. I mean, it will be recalled that Ayimba was the last team to win every continental, any continental title. Um, let's hope that Rivers United, that Governor Wike will be able to invest in this team, uh, sign some quality players, and of course, uh, give us good representation. Now, let's um, talk about the fact that, now, last weekend, the coach of Super Eagle, Jose Pesero, also visited Aqua United in their home game. Uh, of course, it was also an opportunity for him to inspect the stadium to see if it will be good enough to play the next African Cup of Nations qualifying game against Guinea-Bissau. Now, uh, there have been a lot of talks about the fact that Nest of Champions in Oyo used to be, uh, well, arguably uh, one of the finest stadiums in the country. But um, we, we played a couple of home games there and then it was moved to some other part of the country. It looks like with what we saw in Abuja in the last game, which I feel the pitch was terrible, 
and um, not up to the kind of standard for Nigeria. I, I think Nest of Champions might just have a chance again to host Super Eagles. Yeah, they might have a chance. I think uh, that's uh, arguably the best pitch we have, like you said. Uh, in terms of um, the, the, the structure, the way uh, with modern day facilities that the, uh, the, the stadium can post off. And mm. secondly, in terms of the playing tough, I think um, they have a. Do you remember uh, Brownson? That was where the uh, Calf, uh, Confederations Cup took center stage, mm. uh, the final at, uh, you know, that was held. Uh, some couple of um, between the Moroccan, the Moroccan team and the South African team, mm. uh, some couple of uh, weeks ago, less than think less than two months ago, and, and then you know the the pitch is there, very good, and that is why uh, Jose Becerra felt that you know that we can make use of the pitch ahead of the Afghan qualifier against Guinea Bissau. Uh, uh, it's been said that uh, Elder Paul Bassi led uh, Jose Becerra around the pitch to really check. Uh, the state of the pitch, and I think it's a good one because the last time out the Eagles played in, in, in the Afghan qualifier against Syria alone, right there at the Abuja Stadium, the, the pitch wasn't playable, wasn't good for smooth, good football, not smooth for good, good football. I think that's that's watching the Eagles play and struggling in that manner. Remember that the bulk of these guys, almost all of them, play abroad, so yeah. it's it's it wasn't really uh, convenient for them uh, playing on that top. You could see what they did uh, in the second game, uh, you know, against Southam uh, uh, and Principe mm. uh, in the second game, held in, well, in Morocco. The, the, the pitch was good and Very the Eagles yeah. were able to express themselves beating, uh, you know, the team Southam and Principe by 10 goes to nothing. So, think that if the pitch uh, is good enough, after being checked by the, the, coach. the coach, I think we, we should make use of it and, you know, get the players getting them to really play at their, at their best. All right, so yeah, it's very important for us to always play our football uh, on a very, very good tough. Let's see if um, Jose Pacero would at least give his nod on that uh, very stadium as far as that's concerned. Now, Taiwo Wani, good to know that last weekend finally joined Premier League side Nottingham Forest. And then uh, we also hear that Nottingham Forest is also ready to raid Rangers uh, for Joe Aribo. I mean, for uh, Tyler Wani, I saw pictures of him and his family. Looks like, finally, the dream of playing in the English Premier League. Don't forget that um, it was signed by Liverpool, yeah. but never really got to you know, express himself in England. But Nottingham Forest looks like that kind of team that will help him enjoy his stay, get more playing time in English football. I feel very happy for Taiwan when he, uh, I think he's one very gentle, God-fearing uh, young man who plays his football in a gentle, you don't see him uh, in controversies and all of that. That's the kind of person uh, the young man is. Uh, uh, in 2013, after the, the World Cup, uh, the Under-17 World Cup, uh, he was snapped by Liverpool. Uh, I think around that 2015 he was there uh, because due to work permits and all of that, he had to uh, go on um, loans here and there and because of the strength of the depth of the Liverpool team he couldn't really break in there was no opportunity for him and that was why they sold him to Union Berlin uh, the last time out so he's been consistent at getting in the goal for almost two seasons that he was with Union Berlin he was keeping getting in the goal scoring as much as uh, 20 goals in for three appearances is a great achievement for any uh, striker in the world, mm. and that is why Nottingham Forest understanding the fact that they need to get play. I mean, top players to get uh, to maintain their uh, their EPL status. Going all out uh, to get Taiwan Winnie. I think I'm very happy for him uh, because when you look at the Premier League and the German Bundesliga, the Premier League is rated above the German Bundesliga because some people felt we are leaving ja uh, Union Berlin for uh, Nottingham Forest. Forest. Who says they <laughs> might be relegated at the end of the season? I, I, I really don't see when you watch. Uh, the Nottingham Forest team even play while they were in the, the lower division. Uh, you know that this is a team that always gives the big teams a good run for their money. And then with the sign of Taiwan Wuni and a few other players, I think um, the, the future is bright. For Taiwan Wuni, I'm really, really delighted for him. We hope he goes all, goes all out, gets in goals, and probably gets snapped by you know, some of these top clubs. All right, let's see how well that goes. And away from that, let's take it straight to what will be happening in India, where the under 17. Uh, FIFA World Cup will be taking place for the Indian national team. I must give them kudos and um, their effort. We've seen that even their male football is beginning to grow. They're going to play friendly game here and they're involved in some um, games in Asia. Um, good to know. And um, uh, we hope that the you know the 101 incident that happened. I, I wanted to ask. I don't even know if that really happened in football, but I grew up to that story of in India beating Nigeria 100 go to one. one. 
I don't know. So I was told. I've not seen that even on Google. But let's move on. The, the Indian national women team, uh, the under-17, will be hosting the world. Now, in Group A, we have India, US of A, Morocco, and of course, we have Brazil in Group A. Uh, uh, of course, uh, Kule will tell us what he thinks about those groups. Germany, Nigeria, New Zealand, and of course, Chile are in Group B. In Group C, we have Spain, Colombia, Mexico, and of course, China makes up Group C. Exciting, we have um, Japan, Tanzania, Canada, and of course, France makes up um, Group D. Kule, time will not permit us to look at um, the strength of all those teams, but in Group A, which two teams will you tip to come out? India, USA, Morocco, and Brazil? USA and Brazil, very simple. US, Brazil are the team to beat. And then when you look at their uh, performances uh, in the women's football, you will agree with me that they are miles above uh, countries like Morocco. Morocco are making their debut appearance, and also India are not a match when it comes to cover football. So I think those two teams are perennial, uh, you know, uh, they, they are achievers when you talk about football in both male and female category. But in the women category, they are always there, and of course, uh, they should be able to, uh, you know, qualify from the group. Now, in Group B, we have Germany, Nigeria, New Zealand, and of course, um, Chile. And it looks like a strong one. Don't forget, Chile um, is it's a very strong nation of France football is concerned, South American country. Yeah. So, they look like a strong country. We also have Germany in that mix. Nigeria, um, Queens of Africa. So it looks like the whipping dog might just be New Zealand, but we have to be careful. Yeah, we have to be very careful. It's a, it's a tricky one for Nigeria. For some people who are saying uh, it's an easy group, Nigeria will navigate with ease. I bet to defy a little bit. I think we need to prepare. Uh, but um, watching the girls play some of the games, I took my time uh, to watch it. I think that uh, there's a bit of cohesiveness, understanding among the girls. We hope that the, the coach will be able to gel them, prepare them ahead, and they have the best of preparation ahead of the World Cup. I think uh, in terms of uh, pedigree, when you talk about the 17 under 28 great competitions in the women category, uh, you, Nigeria have qualified for another 20 World Cup final on two different occasions. So I think on the basis of that, uh, the Nigerian team and Germany uh, should, be, could be, should make it out of that group. All right, in Group C, we have Spain, Colombia, Mexico, and China. I must say this group should be the group of that because when it comes to women football, Spain, Colombia, Mexico, especially Mexico, China, Spain, look like these teams will go all out for it. Ah, it's a tricky one. China, uh, they are always, you know, when you talk, in, in the women football, the Asian team have been coming up. They, they at the point in time, was, they, they, were, uh, they were competing with the Europeans mm. at some point. So I think it's going to be very difficult uh, in that group. Uh, I think Spain and probably uh, China. All right, looks to me like Mexico might have a stake in this one. Not taking anything away from Colombia. I mean, I think for me, this is a group of that, France. Uh, this group is concerned. Now, the last group we have Japan, Tanzania, uh, Canada, and of course, France making up the group. <laughs> it's a very big one. Japan, uh, definitely a very top team. Tanzania making their debut appearance. And then we also have the French team. Ah, come on, Bronson. I think it's going to be... Canada is also a Canada football nation. Also, yeah, they, they've been... They, they, the Canada's the structure has been absolutely amazing. Uh, for the, the Canadian, uh, you know, football association, I think they, they've had this long-term plan for all their national teams. And the result is what we're seeing right now. Even presently, the Canadian female team is ranked above the Super Falcons. And mm. prior before now, there was a time that we were always... We've beaten the Canadian team before. But right now, they are ranked above the Super Falcons. So I think the, 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 the group is going to be very, very difficult. Tanzania, I think, uh, are out of it. They might uh, be the weeping uh, girls of that group. But um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the three teams will make it uh, from the group. All right. More stories to come after this break. And, of course, don't forget, if you're a football fan, if you follow European football, uh, you should stick around. We have some transfer stories. But let's go for a very quick break first. We'll be back. Welcome back. Now, it's no more news that Sadio Mane has joined Bayern Munich, but the story coming out from um, Liverpool is suggesting that Mo Salah also might be um, having his way out of the club. It's, it's shocking to me, Kunle, because if you look at uh, Mo Salah and uh, Sadio Mane, these guys carried Liverpool on your shoulder seasons past, but it looks like I mean, the legacy in Liverpool might just be a thing of the past very soon. Yeah, a, a very surprising one. We talked about it last week that um, we don't think uh, that they will allow Sedou Mane to go. But um, I think that's football for you. That's what 
It happened at times when we talk about football. Uh, some things happen and it beats me hollow. Uh, you see a player who has served diligently for a club and probably uh, there's a, the, the management will just feel, look, let's sell this guy. And they let him go without even looking at considering whatever uh, repercussions or whatever uh, thing that might happen in the future. So I think um, I won't be surprised if eventually um, uh, 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 Mo Salah uh, get to leave the club again because uh, the, the way, the manner in which they allow Sadio Mane to go, they, I, I, I stand to be corrected. I think, uh, let, me, let me even say it clearly. Liverpool might regret selling um, uh, Sadio Mane at the end of the day because this is a young man. Who no, they, 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 bought, they bought replacement. Don't they, forget that you you, you have he, you have a joke. That's in Liverpool has joke. Francis, Francis. Liverpool also has um. Uh, what was this guy's name again? Uh, Diaz. Diaz. In, okay. In that squad. Now you you have if um if Firmino who, who hasn't been having playing time. This is an opportunity for him to step up. Some of these guys that you mentioned, they are good good players, quality players. I think when you talk about commitment, dedication, diligence, I think Sadio Mane has it above. All these guys is is someone who carries his steam in his shoulder. No, I, 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 I also aware that to, to, Liverpool to, have signed another forward. Just Brassi, in case, just Brassi, in case Salah it's leaves. not about yeah, it's not about no fine. Fantastic. Even if they, I, I will be happy if they even allow Mo Salah also leaves. So we'll see what the other for. I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not predicting doom for Liverpool, but I think that they might. These uh, guys letting your top. Players go at this time might have an adverse effect on them. All right. I'm telling you, it's going to have an adverse effect on them because these are guys that are working day in, day out for them. They go all out. When you watch, you know, when Arsenal, when Liverpool gets to play against Arsenal and you're seeing uh, Sedumani, you're seeing uh, Mo Salah, you know these guys are going to go all out. Sedumani is always in fight from the beginning uh, to the very end. So, to get the replacement for him, fine, you can get the replacement, but they're going, to, they're going to struggle for some time before someone can fill in that vacuum. Now, uh, is Manchester United also going to feel, uh, have a big vacuum to fill in Paul Pogba, who has moved to Juventus? They are not going to feel anything. Because <laughs> 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 Nothing to feel, because uh, in the last, uh, I think for almost a season now, Paul Pogba has not been giving his best. He's been neither here nor there. He's been absolutely inconsistent. So I think selling him, he has, he's told them that he wants to leave. And, you know, before then, he has not been playing regularly. And even some of the times when he plays, he doesn't give his best. He plays good today. And in the last, in the next three, four weeks, he's just there, you know, like, like uh, very anonymous in, in, in my, on match days. So I think the, the management are not sure. There won't be anybody to, I mean, there won't be any need to miss him at this time. But, you know, it, it looks like his mind and uh, everything about him is set on Juventus at this moment. So, uh, uh, for me, he's going to go there and, and also flourish. Remember that Juve <laughs> last season came forth, they could not, I mean, really compete in, uh, with, um, you know, Inter Milan and others in the, with uh, AC Milan mm. in, the, in, the, in, in the league. So, I think with the with player like Pogba and also Angel de, uh, Angel de Maria that has been brought to free, uh, they should be able to compete really with the big boys all right let's see how well that goes for Paul Pogba um, I mean you couldn't win any other title after Jose Mourinho left I have to say that uh, because sometimes Pogba in my opinion plays as if United is privileged to, to have, have him it. in the squad and for a player you can't be bigger than your club I think United have done the best business to uh, I mean allow one of the bad eggs in your ranks <laughs> <laughs> to leave now let's talk about other sports at this time now Serena Williams is excited to see that last week uh, we, we spoke about her, um, you know, to a very high esteem of how impactful she has been in female tennis. And of course, now, at this point, just when we think that uh, maybe she wants to call it quit on tennis, she's returning back to Wimbledon. And clearly, I must say that sometimes, as a professional, you must know when to take a break and when to come back. And I, I think, Serena Williams, that break she took was really needed. Yeah, it was really needed because she wasn't getting the result. A lot of things were happening. The last time she won a Grand Slam was in Australia in 2017. But in 2016, she won. That was the last time she won at the Wimbledon. She needed the break at that time because things were not working. She was getting knocked out at some point uh, in the semi-final. When she gets to the final, she loses her. So I think this, this rest is well needed. But we wait to see how she's able she, she to bounce back. <laughs> she bounce back. Uh, and of course, gets to win. I, I think 
Yeah. Uh, people should just Serena Williams should be left alone because there's been so much talk about him equaling, I mean, eclipsing the record of uh, Margaret Court. Yeah. That, that, that is I, th really, I think that's the necessary that, pressure on her. Yeah, yeah. It's, put, it's, it's really putting a lot of pressure mm. on her and it's having an effect on her. So I think she should just, uh, uh, just uh, mellow down, just take a decision on her. Let her play again. Probably if she has been, if the pressure hasn't been much on her, she will have probably, she will have probably you know, eclipse that record. Now, it reminds me of um, this song by Michael Jackson, Scream. He said, stop pressuring me. It makes me want to scream. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, I think this pressure on her and this record equaling Absolutely. should be laid to rest. Now, can Nadal as well continue his winning streak in this Grand Slam Wimbledon? Big one. Yeah, a big one. <laughs> Nadal, uh, this year has been proven very, very, I mean, very hard not to crack. And uh, remember that in the Roland Garros, it was a ton in the flesh, uh, going all out to win it again. And, you know, stands high above uh, the Fed Ed 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 Express, Roger Federer, and, and also Novak Djokovic. So, I think with the form of Nadal at this moment, mm. it's going to be very difficult for any uh, player to really stop him. So, I think I'm going for Nadal for uh, this uh, Wimbledon is going to be very, very difficult for any of uh, those male, his male contemporaries to really uh, jostle with him. Now, don't forget that Sissi Pass is also part of this one as well. Um, the Joker, Djokovic, um, is also in this one. Let's see how well and who clinches this one. Now, finally, before we go, um, time fast spent. Deontay Wilder, considering returning back to the ring, I must say that um, uh, the young man at some point felt like an invincible a boxer, but of course, it was it was taught boxing lesson <laughs> by yeah, by Tyson Fury. By Tyson Fury, and after then, uh, the guy took a long break. He feels he has had his scam. He's ready to come where, back. Where, where you are beaten twice, you know. The first one was devastating. It was was paced over and over again. And the second time, uh, it was it was fair. But you know, when you lose twice like that, you there's a, there's this pain uh, that you feel consecutively. So I think that was what made him to uh, just uh, you know take some time off. And you know, he's back right now, uh, wanting to do what he knows how to do best. Who says he can also compete? And of course, we claim uh, his his belt uh, from uh, Wilder. Uh, you know, who, who, no, sorry, so Tyson is, Fury. Is, is, is that his rematch? Yeah. So that that chapter is closed. He, he, he lost the first title. He lost, is, no, is that no, his he, he will still have a good chance. Probably if he, if he uh, uh, competes with he some to, other boxers. He needs, boxers. To, return, he needs yeah. to return back to the queue. To the queue, yeah. He's going to have to uh, you know, compete with this, compete with another one. Then you have a chance also to go for the eventual. Who says the belt, uh, you know, the title might still be with Tyson Fury at that time? I think uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, probably it will be wilder he needs to, against Anthony Joshua. He needs, much to, later. He needs to defeat to seek first in his yeah, rematch. Absolutely. Before Absolutely. I, I think I have no doubt in my in my mind that um, he's going to get the job done. All right, Kunle, at that point, <laughs> um, whether you have the doubt or not, I have to let you go at this time. Thank you so much for coming on the program yeah, today. Yeah, always my pleasure to be here, Bronson. All right, with that is a wrap on the program today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Now, I want to say a special thank you for all those that have been sending us email messages. Thank you very much. You know, we read these messages and we feel very happy that you are um, watching the program. Now, you can also send us email if you haven't been a part of the email family right now on the email on the TV screen right now. Also, don't forget to follow us on all the social media platforms that have been displaying and that is still displaying on the screen right now. Especially go to our YouTube channel. It's Spot Pizza on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscription is absolutely free. My name is Brownson Uwana on behalf of all the production crew. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank <laughs> you.